caught up in the bramble maze and he's already spent time walk. He's getting into the trees and thinking about going for the TP. We've got level one crush from DM though. Ooh, do we just go for TP, RTW? Three seconds for that time walk again in towards tower range. Oh, he's gonna try and wrap around it and get over that little waterfall. He is back to safety, but burning through a lot of regen just to be able to stay in this lane. Not a good start for the Faceless Void. Looks like Sage is going to try and keep pummeling, pummeling into him. Crush level one there, just thrown out into the mix as well. We can take a peek down into that bottom lane. Crystal Maiden and the PA moving away from the wave, trying to block up the large camp so Mirana doesn't have that ease of access to either pulling or arrowing. We'll instead just narrow through to the range creeps. Seb down to about half HP. You said he can struggle against this early damage, the spam coming through from the PA and the Maiden. Never He's saving up those sticks. The next label play. The next label play. that level two you were wanting. Mirana. Not for you. No tail? Up against save. This has been going on for a good 30 seconds, and it looks like Save is going to get the better of No Tail. He pings it out saying, guys, come on, can we, can we do something about this? This Dark Willow just standing here and clicking into me. Awkward battle for sure. And then back down towards bottom, Seb does have five one charges and a fairy fire. He was looking very low on HP and I was a little bit worried. Total but Marana's now going to come down with a salve to return the tide back closer to full HP. Massive wave for the PA under tower though. Seb can only really contest the pull. Anything fun in the mid lane, Lacoste? Was not mid. Yeah, and then you go with that support to go and uh, contest the rune, which is spawning up in 30 or 20 seconds now. The two Radiant Observer Wards are looking out for that Radiant's early rune top for the Storm Spirit. Oh, Ping's coming into the Maiden. Sucks and Seb with Gush and Radiant's an arrow flying. Scanning. Hits the range creep though. And Ilya's going to turn with a little Nova there. Doesn't have the Frostbite just yet, but does have a couple of one charges if he thought about maybe turning. And now... Rune spawning in the top spot. GPK unable to get over as the cookie and the scatter blast slow him down enough. Relegated away from the lane. RTW up top. Everyone seems to be farming pretty well. DM may be struggling a little bit compared to his counterpart, the Tide Hunter. Under attack. Oh, I'm trying to make a jump Radiant's down bottom again. This VP, Crystal Maiden PA dual lane, so good at chipping away at these two heroes from OG. But you're looking at full ones, you're looking at headdress. There doesn't seem to be a, a great opportunity to actually seal the deal. A nice little block from the PA to stop the Zentor Radiant's dying as well. Oh, 
You're right. So it is. Yeah, No Tail had forced save to TP away as well, so Dark Willow couldn't go and grab one there. And bottom lane, Ilias leap into Arrow. Very short range onto the Maiden. Does have five one charges, and again should be okay. Just popping the Fairy Fire. Not a comfortable laning stage by any means, though, from VP. It's been really good pressure from OG all across the board. Even though VP... Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Yeah. And they do come in with save. Vortex back into the Bramble Maze and Topson. Well, he can't get out now, can he? Pops the wand and tries to battle, but it was all too much for him. While down bottom lane, Seb is there, killing off the Phantom Assassin who was left all alone. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. <laughs> Yeah, and a great way to keep the rest of his team alive. Save. Do we go for the kisses? We do, but look at save. Great play straight underneath. But the arrow lands onto that Shadow Realm's Dark Willow. And finally, they get the kill. So in the end... <laughs> yeah, one of those spells, you run towards them. No tail. Oh, DM nearly had it. It's fine. It's all good up there. <laughs> no tail. Has another salve as well. DM's running forward towards them. Yeah, okay. Just a one hit. Wax into the bash of, onto the faceless void. Oh, DD Storm. GPK. Oh, he's been arrowed. Thompson has a cookie. Onto the Marana. Onto the Storm. In we go. And GPK is falling. He's got 4 1 charges and a raindrop, though. He's on the high ground. It's a difficult kill to finish, and he does pull lightning away. Great dodge out of that scatter blast of Thompson. But they've come in again with PA arriving. They desperately want to take down Saxon, but there's one more leap over the trees. Back to safety. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Happy kid. This PA rotating off of the bottom lane because Tidehunter just too much to handle right now. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Yeah, it's real fast mech. It's gonna be like a 10-11 you know, minute mech here for the Tidehunter. Tower. Mid lane's being hit pretty hard. Storm Spirit trying to put a stop to Toxin's aggression for the arrow. It's there again. Bramble Maze comes through and Ilias does TP in to help out. GPK's very low, but Topson's caught with a cursed crown. Sucks at and RLCW couldn't save him, but they are waiting here with a time walk and a chrono, and I think they want to get GPK. Oh, but he's salved up. And this gives a bit of time for No-Tail to maybe get closer to that level 6. Save is here to stop him from leeching that experience, but... Without the Slardar, I'm not really able to put a stop to No-Tail. Oh, now the Slardar comes. Dyer's top tower is under oh, attack. Just. And pressure onto the tier one. And yeah, that Ilias Maiden you were talking about, shifting up top as well. Crystal Maiden plus Storm. Always a really good feeling for the Storm Spirit to have that mana aura. Radiant's yep. bottom tower is under attack. <laughs> A soldier's fortune. More Topson. 
That's a Ghost Scepter level one from Thompson. Uh, I'll see thinking about the Chrono. Goes towards GBK and catches the Slardar too. With a kiss is landing. It should be a takedown on Storm and maybe another here of the Star Storm and the Arrow. All connecting onto Virtus Pro. The Bash hits in from LTW. The Sunray burning through DM, but the Slardar has slipped away. And Fishboy gets back behind his tier one. But yet again, it's these, these, this big move, the big team fight from OG. And with the bounty rooms being grabbed, it's a massive win. Ravage with a supernova. You were talking about cycling through these ultimates, using them in pairs, and that supernova doesn't quite land. The GBK dodges the stun, but has to ball away because OG ain't here. Four heroes strong, they're ready to take down this tier one. Catapult, they'll try and keep it alive. Seb not feeling tanky enough to withstand all of Virtus Pro's onslaught. And that arrow threading the needle between the storm and the dark will over the cookie landing. Ooh. A little bit spooky there, save even Radiant's thinking about the Terrorize. Is under attack. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Well, OG, without Radiant's any ultimate, still going to make the play top. Attack. A nice Radiant's arrow on down. to that slaughter. And they will get the Sunray on him as well. Crush to cancel it out, but there's an urn. Fiery Spirits, plenty of damage over time as the ball lightning from Storm. On towards No-Tail, they try and move like Shadow, but the Phoenix has been picked off. Sentry down. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Can we can we go back to Thompson, please? Because there's, you know, uh... is it like you didn't let me play Pugna, so I'm going to play Pugna a different way? <laughs> Hell yeah! I mean, I guess once you've got level 15 talent with, with E-Blade and Mortimer's Kisses, you you really are running around with a shotgun. This is the true shotgun build. Forget Morphling. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Radiance middle Super tower good. has fallen. I'm excited. He's, yeah, he's not too far away from it. About a thousand gold. Stalls very low with Crystal Maiden finding a pick and taking him down. LTW's face is void as they do expend Supernova, but the arrow missing save on his way up to the high ground, and he'll get a good terrorize. I only catches the tide, actually. I thought it would clip the Phoenix, but save Shadow Realm dead to the cookie of Topson. It's a super soaker. This is a real, real shotgun from the Grandma. There we go. Yeah, blasting into the creeps. So Virtus Pro right now, the the story of their game, it feels like they've got to make more space for the PA. But at the same time, Storm is also a, a reasonably greedy hero. Do you think they've got enough room to maneuver here to get both of them farmed? Topson. Go Scepter, or oh, Frostbite being held by Ilias, waiting. And maybe a Topson TP can come now, but he's just being shredded here. And the ball lightning from Storm should be able to secure this one. Topson invis, but you're right. There's reveal from Ilias, really on the money with that sentry placement. under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's top tower is under attack. <laughs> without, <laughs> without clarity, without anything. And an arcane ring in his pocket too. 
Battle Fury for Ampy Kid. Over into the Dire Jungle to take down an ancient Dyer's stack. And we've got Blink on DM. So we can start seeing this combination play Stupendous. between the offlaner and the two supports. Because they can go in without worrying too much about losing their lives, force initiations, force team fights, maybe bait a big ulti here and there, while PA and Storm are very good at choosing when they want to jump in. And now an Orchid on Storm means they can also pick their targets. Radiant are scanning. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, there is. Well, that, that, that's great because they know that DM has blink, so they could stop that potential blink steal if he tried to sneak in there. Clever stuff from No Tail. Might seem a little bit weird because nothing actually happened, but the thought process is often what matters in Dota. Structures are fortified. No, so Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. I would I would rather I would rather say something like that and you know make a player appear smart than try and flame them for misclicking. I don't want a Reddit thread with my name on it, thank you very much. <laughs> now we're getting one. And the draft. Oh, it's done, yeah. Scythe of Vice queued up, too. Not even going to go for, you know, boots of travel or anything like that. Radiance middle and OG comes sweeping through this mid lane area. And DM, Dyer's sprint and blink ready, but that arrow's coming. Okay, a little bit close for comfort. But the VP are very good at spreading this map wide. Dyer's and that's why OG, yeah, they've got a send tide top. Try and defend the tower there, while they also want to keep this opportunity for a team fight open to them. My gratitude. Pick it up, Mortimer. Dyer's bottom tower. Yeah, I think it, maybe two. Radiance but my memory is getting pretty bad as I get older, Lacoste. That's fair enough. I'll trust and believe you. Oh, Void. You said he had no dispel, no defensive item, and he is dead. He just gone. So that safety net no longer available to him as OG still poking around looking for a fight that they can try and start but everybody's already TP'd home there's nobody left to catch they've all retreated <laughs> and they still see OG. Three heroes under an Radiant's observer board. Tower is under attack. It looks like No Tail's thinking about, you know, how they how they knew attack. that smoke was coming. Do they have vision around Dyer's here somewhere? He's, he's pinging out fallen. where they're maybe ha you know, hiding or standing or keeping observer boards lurking around. Radiant structures are fortified. But again, it's a very swift decision from Virtus Pro up towards the top. Keep that farm going in a safe area of the map while pushing towards an objective in that tier two. 
I'll just keep dodging the fight. Tower is under attack. Bottom tower is under attack. PA showing mid. They knew Thompson was there a second ago. Now he's gone into Invis. Hiding around with a Murana to throw an arrow, but the TP, the Yule Scepter, cancels the TP. They're trying to find that PA, while down bottom a fight is brewing onto the Tide Hunter. It looks like PA is fine with the BKB to run away, so down bottom the Sunray onto Tide keeps him alive, and RTW arrives. There's the Chrono with a Supernova on top. Nicely placed with a Ravage onto three. It's OG coming through onto the tier two to find one pick off, and can they get more though? DM's tanky and he is burnt alive by the Sunray of No Tail. So OG can run in for more and keep the aggression going, because save has no way to escape and OG finally get the numbers they need into this battle isolating the PA and then converging bottom Radiance bottom tower has fallen Radiance bottom tower is under attack Don't have any ultis left. No Ravage, no Chrono, everything expended. And they try and go on towards Seb with no Greaves for 10 seconds. The ball lightning in. The GPK gets yulled up and the arrow's gonna come from Saxa. They've caught out the storm and they're blowing him up with a chain stun. The GPK is gone. Ilias with a zoning freezing field, but that's turned around on. Again, the Greaves and the Sunray, so much heals. The PA does make the jump into the back with DM Slardar. They find the Phoenix, no tail's gone. The Bardock Milias comes, but DM has been left all alone again and he's bashed into oblivion for a triple. ILTW cruising now. Faceless Void wants Miss Thompson Grandma to keep diving deeper because she is opening everything up here, unlocking the fights for OG. Nice body block on the arrow there. Keeps Epic Kid in the running of the team fight, and he goes back in onto the snapfire. Thompson hiding though. Oh, they can't get her. The terrorize is there, and finally Thompson will fall. Epic Kid still with a lot left in the tank, but RTW has the BKB TP. Anything to stop it? There's nothing. Mid lane, no tail. Oh, GPK nearly had that dive into Orchid on him. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. OG. Quick little play in there from Thompson and No Tail. And of course, DM just has Blink and Cloak trying to get BKB, but his recent buyback really has set him back, sitting at about seven and a half thousand net worth. Okay, VP has this PA at the top of the net worth board. Dyer's Doesn't feel is under attack. Ah! <laughs> Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dire structures are fortified. Radiant's bottom barracks are under attack. Dire's top tower is under attack. Nice. All the ones that matter, yeah. And RTW has that BKB. GPK, well, he spends his. He has an arcane rune going on Storm, but that Tidehunter just frontlines for all of OG. Now they move with the fear, the terrorize, catching the face of Zoid, but the E-Blade, the cookie back, they've given him the save. GPK can't finish the job, so RTW just BKBs and turns the fight. Still holding Chrono, doesn't need to bloody use it, because the heals into Arrow are going to be there from Saxon to set up on to save. And Thompson. Radiant's bot.
Radiant's bottom barracks are under attack. Radiant's bottom barracks has fallen. It's so scary when OG have the green light. Every ult is still ready. And they are so good at controlling this Roche pit. Jump onto Thompson, though. Well, if you give up a kill like that, Vertus Pro will take it gladly. He is absolutely alone. Throwing daggers at Seb. Must have uh, misclicked there onto the onto the BKB. <laughs> well, unfortunate things. And this allows OG just to walk straight into the Roche pit now. No way for VP to really contest that he's outside of maybe a storm steal. Oh, I don't think I don't think GTK is feeling all too confident though this game. And Virtus Pro are all just gonna group up down towards their bottom lane. Roshan. Roshan Grabbed up by OG. Aegis and Cheese there for the Void and the Snapfire, respectively. Gotta keep... Radiant are scanning. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's <laughs> bottom tower is under attack. Yeah. Damage! Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower has fallen. It seems close to impossible for Virtus Pro now to try and hold on, but the big jump is there, and again, they've blown up the Aegis. Impossible, my ass. Shut up, Caster, because they've killed him off, and the fear of the terror rise perfectly timed. ILTW annihilated as Virtus Pro executing beautifully some spectacular stuff, and they've killed no tail. Well, the zip back in. Thompson, Moonlight Shadow's there to give them at least a bit of an umbrella of safety, but DM is whacking into him. Thompson is down. Epic Kid with a triple kill. Virtus Pro get them all killed off before they can use a single spell. What? Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Total spawnage. <laughs> Dyer's structures are fortified. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Like stealing, like stealing candy from a baby, and no longer living. Dyer's middle baby. tower is under attack. Dyer are scanning. Yeah, I, I think both of us are a bit caught off guard there, thinking OG with all their ulties available, but at least get the chance to cast one, but... <laughs> when PA just, you know, 1.7k crits you, you can't cast anything, can you? The prize is 
Smart. I do still have cheese on Snapfire though, as it dive forward towards DM, forces the BKB TP. Nothing to stop it there. Execution gods. Double damage rune now though. And of course, the silver lining, even though OG lost Aegis, lost the fight, they've got ultimates for round two when they go up towards that radiant high ground again. RTW wants the DD rune. Is there a bottle of something? No, just gonna wait for it a little bit longer. He sure does. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Radiance Tower has been defeated. Epic is courier gone. And a smoke coming out of the base as a dire observer ward should spot them in a second, but Marana giving up the game there a little bit. Sax is just going to be the sacrifice from OG as she was out here scouting for anything that was coming. Hunter. They're TPing in OG, everyone they can, and the Chrono onto the PA now. Trying to zip towards the back is a silence of the grandma, and the freezing kill comes with a supernova too, but Epic Kid down for 90 seconds, and the Ravage to counter the freezing field will clip Ilias. RTW with a double kill. OG desperately needed that, didn't they? Seconds. worried about ILTW not having buyback in the way that you were kind of talking about that instant initiation from the Abyssal Blade, but it's now in a situation where PA doesn't have one. Second lane of racks being opened up by OG. The repair kit is going to delay this inevitable destruction of the middle lane tier three. Storm Spirit falling around, but the Yule's into Arrow. Oh, he gets the PKB off. GPK's out of there. There's tier three still standing. Radiance Middle Tower has fallen. Radiance Middle Barracks are under attack. Radiance Save, just gonna try to spam out some spells. It keeps the ranged barracks alive at least. But another victory for OG. And this is after a team fight where they expended all of their ultimates. So they've still got a good minute or so until yeah, until everything's back up again. And so it's a window for VP to actually go and strike, get a bit of momentum back for themselves. But Dar Observer Ward, yeah, it's being pinged out by save. They've got a good feeling about that vision that OG have been keeping on this left-hand side of the map. Dar are scanning. jump again but the arrow gpk didn't get his bkb off so sight device is there but with the arrival of epileptic kid the death of the snapfire gonna be there for a good 70 seconds radiance middle barracks are under attack fast spawn on roche allies disappear
I think Save is baiting. Save knows his vision there, and they make the jump of Abyssal Blade into the crush, but they've got the BKB in the turn around from Sam with that Ravage. Ulti Dungeon lands the Chrono, perfectly placed, and a bit of Star Storm damage to land on top of their faces, and GPK slays Epileptic Kid with a freezing field that comes, and it does some good damage to bring the Void down. Now GPK standing around with the dust coming, Sam dispels it off, but the Moonlight Shadow's ending, and the Tide Hunter, well, you said it. He is tanky as all hell. Seb still on half HP as DM tried the backstab onto the Phoenix of No-Tail. Always oh, duking around, but Blink is down for five more seconds. They're even going to throw a supernova there. Kill off this DM slot as quickly as they can. And OG. I leave you out of sorts, but I got bigger talking fish to fry. <laughs> Bounty! No such thing as too much damage. I huh. Oh my god. Save. Don't be afraid. You've got to know that they see you every step of the way. Double damage rune on Thompson. It's not playtime! And not going so many. Yeah, just tank up a bit more on that PA. Oh, well, happy kid. Chief being into an arrow. OG not looking to commit for it though, as Roshan. did that and ripped their eyes out. Radiance top tower is under attack. Radiant are scanning. Level up, grabbed up for DM. Tons of attack speed for him. And Roshan now 15 seconds as OG have Supernova back up. Another 20 for Chrono, but they'll have Ravage to cover it. And they should be able to have the full arsenal of abilities for this next Roche fight. And VP are the ones that make the slippery move. Dyer's courier has been the pressure is on them. I could have hit and PA's immediately out of there. Tide Hunter just walking forward, waddling in towards VP and the Roche Pin. But Storm fires the jump, they've got the Terrorize coming. RTW is opening himself up, but he's been exploited here. But the Abyssal Blade, Lotus Storm, turned back around and he gets the Chrono off. That Lotus Storm has turned it around. They get the shift of the fight, and they finally never have to get around to buy back. And now the Ravage with the Supernova covered. It is OG all the way home. Sam buys back, and Slardar's down, and the PA still trying to return to this fight as they need this Roshan. VP are desperate. They've lost save though, and he's gone for a hundred. No slaughter for them. It's all on the shoulders of the PA. Maybe they can find the Marana, but Epikid doesn't want to come in. But I don't think he's got a choice here. He's gonna Oh my god, no! He's gonna get E-bladed and an ultra kill for Thompson! The PA was PK long ball in, but Roshan's not nearly dead. They do get the kill. Raiding kills Roshan. A just snatched though by LTW, and they get the stuns they needed. GPK's out of mana. He is surely dead to rise in a pit, and that's got to be good game. <laughs> that Lotus, man. 